are you thinking about doing infrared photography but don't know whether your camera can do it all you have to do is go out when it's slightly dark or in a darkened room and get your TV remote and press the button so you see that see I can't see that flashing this is through a phone so the phone is very good at it but if you use your camera in video mode and press the button you can see what the remote is doing With the help from my brother and his friend Roadster, we decided to go out and take some pictures in the sunny Eden Valley. But it was just brutal. Sun was beating down on my head and I think I got sunstroke by this point. Summer's here. And I was going to say it'd be ball blue skies, but that hasn't happened. Not where I want to take some pictures. So I'm just going to photograph stuff in infrared. So I've picked this tree here, which hopefully it's one which will glow in infrared, but probably not. There's certain types that don't as well. But you should get a bit of contrast between the tree and the darkness of the road, which should be reflecting less infrared. All to do now is to set up and wait for the, um, the sun to come out, because you have to sort of um, have bright sun sunshine to get the most out of infrared photography. And I've got me SRB photographic, uh, R, was it R72 or R720 infrared filter on the camera which I'll have to take off to compose, and my Canon 5D Mark I. And just set up and take a picture. So what I've done here, I focus on the subject, put the Lenster manual, locked off the focus, put the R72 or the R720 infrared filter on the camera taking the picture and what it's doing now is it's forcing the, the sensor to accept the red light so it's all most of the um, visible light has sort of gone the filter's filtered it out and what's left is pushed through onto the sensor even through the very very weak um, low pass filter which is meant to filter out that on this camera and the settings are f11 at a 30th of a second uh, usually I find you can give it a bit more than this but usually a 20 seconds sorry 30 seconds usually 20 seconds to 30 seconds is about the right exposure for like an average summer day I forgot to mention I'm using a two second timer or you can use a remote release just so you don't move the camera during the exposure or get a little bit of vibration early on when you've pressed the shutter button so and also i've used mirror lock up so it goes two second time it locks up the mirror and then it calms down and then the shutter goes off uh just so because it's just a long exposure just so you don't get any vibration which will make the um the picture blurry so have a look at the picture now and see what you think as you can see from this little frame here i'm very conscious about edge patrol which means really just keeping anything distracting out of the edges. I use the white balance color picker to select a highlight on the cloud to set the white balance for this. This gives the greatest separation between the, uh, well, the infrared tones in the foliage and everything else. I think this lens is a bit of a hot spot in the center or it's just lacking in contrast getting a bit of infrared flare into the shadows which is softening off the effect well I didn't know what to shoot so I'll come back to this old chestnut this tree here and I thought there was a road up to like a little 
parking place, but I think this might be on private land. I don't know. Oh, this oh, behind me is the uh, footpath. I took the wrong gate, but never mind. I'll shoot it now while the uh, shoot first, ask questions later, and then get out of here sharpish. I'm just waiting for the sun. You see, I've taken one with um, a focus and all that sort of thing. Put the infrared filter on. The R72 filter or R720. So I'm just waiting for the bright sunlight to come and uh, illuminate the trees. And here it comes, I think. Oh, there's people over there. Damn it. <laughs> I think I might be training dogs. So if I just keep quiet and uh, shoot this and go and i might take the tree on its own and then i might take it but first i'll take it with <laughs> this tree here and this tree and sort of panoramic with a bit of negative space in the middle uh just with this path going off off into the um into the distance and i'm just waiting for the sun now and I'll just take it with the infrared filter on and that's about it really. <sighs> and then I'll probably just take the tree on its own and try and get a lot of sky sort of above it. Uh, just so, just the contrast between the, should be the snowy white tree in black and white and the grass and the dark inky sky well, there's quite a few clouds in so it probably won't be that inky but that's that's about it really oh. I may have slightly messed up on this one I may have given it a bit too much on the left there but I can always sort of crop in to compensate for that if the case requires it I've just had a nice chat with a farmer about the importance of looking busy when you're doing farming and photography. <laughs> so I've just taken a picture of that tree, but I've shot myself in the foot. I should have brought a longer lens. Um, I might get closer to this wall here and see if I can just fill it with all the sky. But unfortunately, these trees here and there's a tree over there that's sort of uh, getting in the way. So I'll see if I can get closer. So I've got the uh, 17 to 40 on, and I'm shooting about 40 millimeter. I mean, I'd like to get in the field, but nah, I don't think it'd work if you got in the field. You get too close and you get too much grass. 
too much foregrounding so I'll go over there and take a picture over there I've walked along the uh, side of the field and I finally got a clear shot of the tree but as usual the sun's gone in so I'm just waiting for the sun to come out and then I'll whack on the old IR72 or 720 filter and then we'll have a beautiful piece of fine art photography <laughs> So I'm hoping that's quite soon, <laughs> but it looks like it's cloudy in a bit, so it might not be as uh, soon as I think. I'm just hoping the farmer doesn't come back and squash me with his tractor. Well, the sun's come out. Woohoo! Just doing the exposure now on the standard setting. In fact, I've got it locked on the program, um, the C uh, program dial on the, on the top of the camera, so it's. Uh, 30 seconds, F11, mirror up, two second timer, click, bang, that's it. So I don't even have to think about it, I just put it on that. And that's usually enough uh, for this this time of year. If it's really, really hot, maybe you can drop it down to 20 seconds, but 30 is about right. Here again, most of the composition is within that uh, in a rectangle uh, but I feel that the brightness the foreground with the glowy grass is offset by the darkness above the clouds <laughs> 